Pascal's law. Goes by, and he made this with act. Coming up, she's getting bumped out. Anybody? Any ideas? See, she's been repeated. Interesting. Ah, thanks everybody for patiently waiting. Yeah, this is a new thingy for us. So, first thing, stable Wi-Fi, then a stable phone, because it's vertical, right? it's even less stable. This is working. I've come to the balcony of my house now. I'm hoping I'm getting yes. some signal here. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm so sorry it took so much of time and I kept re uh, entering and I think I kept dropping off. Hello, everyone. Uh, hi, hi. Does our minds work better? Does designers' minds work better when they're on the move? Sorry, I can't hear you. It might actually be a, a better interview when you're walking about. Oh, <laughs> yeah, let's walk the dog. It is good. <laughs> and some lovely, yeah. um, miss, I miss the terraces. The, uh, oh, you're not in Pune anymore. I am not in Pune. Pune. I'm in Sonipat, which is next to Delhi. It's Delhi NCR, basically. And yeah. uh, I've almost converted my front room into a terrace by having this kind of a swing in my front, uh, as in my hall, because I am not a sofa person. Yeah. So I'm more of a craft person, and that's why it's all here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm wondering if this started out as a prototype on your on your sketchbook, what you're sitting on right now. Yes, yes. We, I actually got it uh, made. I designed it and I got it made by, um, uh, I got I, I got lucky to get a bamboo person close by and he made this with actual bamboo. Like this is not ratan or something, but this is like real time bamboo. So it's very well done by that person and it's damn cool. You know, that was a completely cheeky question, but, but you know, with the designer, it always lands on bull, bullseye, doesn't it? <laughs> Yes, um, tell me, tell me, how are you doing today? Good, good. Is it how? Which? What kind of a day is it? Like, is it sunny, hot? It's a little humid right now, and it might rain because your rains are around March, April, May. It's okay. a different country, okay. I'm telling you. Ah, uh, it's sunny where I am at. You see, sun comes up. Yeah. Very sunny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, today it's not very sunny, so just come close by to the balcony and that's all. Yes. You don't remember this, Nandita? I do. And yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you've kept it well enough. Yeah, that is so good of you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's wrong. Yeah, so you, you had a long-term thought process when you when you selected this. It's wrong. Yeah, and it's a craft. It is do. Dokra art. It is uh, generally done in Orissa and uh, I got it from uh, a place which was selling only crafts done by craftspeople. So I have been a craft enthusiast and that's why my house is also full of like I have Haryanvi cards and I have uh, things which you won't find in normal houses. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, thanks. Uh, 
I, I I was like literally I was telling everybody who joined that okay if it doesn't work out this time I'm simply gonna start reading out your CV because it's way more entertaining. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that was my backup. No, plan. it's very boring. It's a lot. It's too big now. <laughs> so I mean, I I I was uh, I made a, a very brief um, you know a very brief uh, skimming of it this morning and oh, I'm. Like I was just telling, like for me, it's like a deep water dive. You get on one side of the swimming pool and nobody sees you. It's the IT side of the swimming pool, and you swim, 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 and you just get out. You're still an IT person. That's that's my scene. That's that's yeah. boring. I agree. But you've done like pharmacy. You've done design. Uh, you've done uh, multiple facets of design. You've done some bit of event management, and uh, we've run magazines and a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about, and I can already see two, three parts of the podcast. Uh, so, design always intri intrigued you growing up. Yes, yes, I. I um... When I was a little kid, I used to tell my mom, "I'm going to be a be the best drawer on earth." So, <laughs> but then, yeah, I didn't know it was called as being a designer. It was called as being an artist or whatever. But uh, being from a uh, Maharashtrian family, where it was more about you should study science, you should be doing uh, more of the logical studies, and you can always draw all forever in life. So that is why I did my pharmacy first. and i still wanted to get into design and that is the reason why i went ahead after pharmacy to do another graduation in uh, bachelor's in design and visual communication yeah and you've done uh, communication you've done broadcasting you've got yeah. uh, you, you know how this industry works you got some bit of media uh, as into it as well yeah and and all of that now i see now i jump forward to your current uh, role in setting up a university i mean it's a different ball game isn't it it's not just about design yeah it is just not about design we are working into design strategy and uh, because i did my post graduation in design strategy and management from nit Uh, I worked into that field, and I was working with a company in Delhi uh, after passing out, basically to start with for my uh, my project. And I kept working with it for a long time, and then I worked in design management. I worked in design innovation, and basically I did this very good stint with Citibank in Dublin, wherein I got to author a couple of books and come up with design thinking methods and design thinking workshops, uh, wherein the BFS could take part, as in the banking, finance sector, and design strategy combination was something that I could actually work out. And there, I think I got lucky, and uh, that is where I found that okay, I can actually do this. That design strategy is not only related to design, or not only related to design entrepreneurship, but I can actually apply it into various fields available. And uh, taking this learning into hand, uh, I am trying to set this up, uh, set this whole college up, which is a school of management. And we essentially have courses in design, strategy, and management, and uh, fashion management also now, and in both. As in, because we are a UGC recognized place, so we do give degrees also. That is the pure MBA and the BBA thing, uh, and we also have an executive MBA. So. Uh, in today's day yes an executive will definitely help because for people who are into creative leadership it is important that they understand management to a good level why people are who are from a generic management level have to understand what is it that the designers do and how do they really function better so this is something that we are trying to establish and so far so good it's going okay yeah that's good yeah so <laughs> when we met remember you in that shift away from the corporate world you were taking that diverse but you were never really rooted into the corporate world so to say <laughs> yes know, i so still so keep taking it. sessions for kids to for entrance to nid i used to select these five kids per year and i used to guide them free uh, taking their sessions every saturday sunday because i thought i should give back to the society in some way i learned on scholarship and i thought i should help students who want to get in and 
touch wood and it's been really good that all the students have been placed well they've gone to nid some of them have gone to srishti mit that time those were the institutes and they're still in touch and they're so good just cute little kids 12 standard kids and it's it's wonderful to be with them i think yeah that is i love towards kids <laughs> 12th standard kids uh yeah wow design faculty then cuz my my daughter lo- loves crafts and um, and creating stuff and and strangely it's because of shabitri because of my wife uh, she found an interest in coding so we put her to whitehead junior uh, uh-huh. for the courses on uh, courses on coding and now she's she's gotten so much into it she designs her own characters using block code and she designs small programs and she's designing a mobile app so screen one okay is happy friendship day if you click on it there's a big heart that comes yeah 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 i know i know sai is also doing the same thing she's also enjoying yeah. and in fact they have set up a very good structure wherein uh, they have these teachers who are again child friendly and uh, they happen to have these very simple processes that they teach to little kids and kids pick up really fast so i think that's a cool thing to do for little kids yes yeah and and without realizing a lot of um, design mindedness is is coming uh, to the industry do you feel that way are you are you contacted by um, by corporates uh, to have workshop sessions at least some level of exposure in the leadership to start to have a design design at the beginning of the process kind of uh, engagements Mm-hmm. so see uh, now anirban you just mentioned design mindedness uh, there is another word that's running around in the corporate which is design thinking then there's another one which says design thinking is dead and now we have to get a uh, thing of design innovation okay so let mm-hmm. me just tell you the difference one is design thinking cannot be learned in those two hour sessions no design thinking is not an adult hobby class no design <laughs> thinking is something <laughs> yes well, it's not it's not you might go through a small workshop which is d school based or uh, or whatever the double diamond process or whatever you come up with some prototype and you feel great wonderful i've used my hands today and i've made something out of paper i've used some colored pens wonderful that is wonderful and but that the is... colorful sticky notes in across the ha 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 sticky notes everywhere and 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 you get that feeling that yes i'm there and i've done design thinking Yes you must have attended a design thinking workshop but understanding what is design thinking is way beyond that okay now see there is a very simple explanation to it is if you go to some crafts person or or rather you go to a designer also okay you get something made or you stand there and see how is a designer making something that probably the designer is sketching probably the designer is uh, doing something on 3d software or whatever just try and enter at that designer try and ask a designer what are you doing if that designer is a really great friend of yours the designer will be like okay wait i'll tell you after i finish it else that designer will shoo you off and tell you listen let me do my work yeah. okay so what happens is in the designer's brain uh, the person is making something but at the same time articulating what is that person making why is that person making it likewise and why is the result coming out in a given way that articulation is done by a design strategist that articulation is done by a design management person that person who understands design and design thinking both so when you go and attend a workshop on design thinking you understand that maybe this is a kind of a process which will help me coming up with a uh, say solutions to a given problem to start with to identify a given problem and then work ahead to come up with iterations work ahead to come up with say uh, more than one solutions prototypes and getting a feedback from from your customer or getting a feedback from the person who is actually facing the problem to check whether it is working or not so so you get to know the process but for you to understand designing completely you have to immerse yourself on it in it for more than one to one and a half year only then that yeah. works otherwise you have attended a workshop you have felt good that you have attended it you have enlightened awakened your creativity in your head which was you know sleeping after you joined your engineering college probably <laughs> i'm sorry but uske baad shayad aapne wo darwaza band kar diya tha wo darwaza aapne khol diya 
and you're feeling good about it is wonderful but i would suggest is go ahead explore more find out these design thinking methodologies there are there are various outlooks to it i won't say there are many methods but method is one there are various outlooks there are various case studies out, out there there are case studies from frog there are case studies from fitch there are case studies from the d school stanford there are these specific indian case studies also go through them find out how is it that your problem statement that you identified how is it close by to either of them and then try to work towards it then it becomes more towards a design thinking thing and then the corporate probably can say that maybe we are doing it now with regards to your question about taking workshop with corporates i did a lot of workshop with cognizant when i was with cognizant uh, because i was into their design uh, into the innovation capacity building team and uh, yes there are these specific uh, requirements wherein you take these workshops or rather if you go by the 3m and uh, the toyota and the tesla way then they have this specific uh, they have this very specific uh, system in which they start with problem identification and problem filtration and then they go ahead and work on those problems and come up with solutions and that then they call what is the actual design innovation method you know and uh, yes workshops are done in various corporates workshops are done with students and uh, likewise it works across uh, also with this let me answer what shabitri just asked about little children so i think uh, little children ko zyada sikhana nahi padta hai you just have to start them a little thoda sa push button dena padta hai and then they start solving it out themselves you know so for them also it's not some art classes art classes is separate but if you have to go for design thinking you have to start with that little thing of problem identification so let i know i'm doing the talking a little too much but let me give you a very small example i saw this ted talk in which uh, the person starts with you've seen that apple right jo bahar milta hai with a red color ka apple and it has a small sticker on it right so the first time when you pull out the sticker na you you get that apple into your fingers and you feel oh shit this is sticking on my fingers i don't want it and all that and then you somehow roll out that sticker you push it off you wash the apple and you eat it first time second time third time you don't notice that you pulled out the sticker and put off so by default you just don't notice that this was a problem that you had so being that aware is something that children are already Yes. so they notice quickly we just have to pay attention we just have to you know put out their ears and see okay is is she or he is he talking about some problem there and is it actually a problem go ahead and then sit with them and see so what could be the possible solutions if you do that i think design thinking is going to develop in kids anyways so yeah yeah i think i did a little a lot of talking i'm going to stop <laughs> um, yeah yeah no i i still with uh, with isha all the time you know she's stuck with something she keeps her this abundant enthusiasm so adults have a very set approach to solving iske liye yahi chahiye you know unless i find that out you can stop you know but it's not no problem uh, if i can find uh, if i can find this uh, pull off something or do if i cut off something and i'll make my own part and i'll do it around right 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 that's yeah uh, but i was like i was very interested in um in science and theory and all the uh, studies but going up and setting up a college it requires much more you know it's a lot of admin work a lot of follow up follow through something which a designer might not be comfortable uh, it's cuz it's not the arts right it's it's a lot of uh, people management it's a lot of people interactions how did you manage the change uh, to to go through okay. the process <laughs> that's quite a question for me the biggest change was <laughs> okay so for me the biggest change was coming uh, getting out of pune you know that was yeah. the biggest possible change and uh, then coming to a very different new place new people but uh, i have been fortunate enough to get good people to support including the vice chancellor who takes care of the whole university dr gupta and uh, everyone in fact they were open to this idea of um, 
rather a woman coming and setting up something which is contradictory to the north indian um uh, so called chivalry but stay away from uh, women wala structure but uh, they were really open to this and uh, they have helped me a lot and uh, but the biggest challenge has been to get people to be taking classes on to design management and having a combination of knowledge of design and management both so that has been the biggest challenge for me uh, but what uh, there has been a process that i have uh, applied eventually is uh, if there's a person who comes from a pure management background then we happen to let him uh, get involved with all the designers get immersed with all the design processes with all the uh, we have labs we have uh, wherein kids work you know there is a metal workshop there is a wood workshop so so we allow that management person to actually uh try to mingle first and then understand that this is a very different way of living this is a very different way of learning also where learning is by learning by doing rather than uh, just by rote you know so we have like open book exams and it's it's very different so for them to understand that it it takes some time so that is my biggest challenge and uh, i'm doing okay by now and i'm hoping to do best after a few years maybe in it uh but people management yes it is important but then uh, luckily i had done all that in nid studies because we did design management so that kind of helped and uh, also my earlier bosses have been good enough to be uh, like when i just spoke to sudhir if you have attended the uh, insta that we did uh, sudhir taught a very good thing which was about giving ownership of course uh, we have to be doing a little bit of supervision but giving ownership helps people to uh, you know feel uh, that connect to whatever they are doing so that is something that i live by because not only sudhir my first boss who was holger uh, who is a german he also had a similar way of uh, managing things so i think i picked up from my bosses and uh, it's it's like how you teach like how your teacher does so it's similar that i manage like how my manager did <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah there are these traits that you pick up from uh from influential people anyway that come up at the right moment uh, as long as they are not being pushy so it's a very delicate balance and also when you've had negative interactions it also gives you some kind of teaching that you know things not to do it's just a general comment we've got some interesting questions uh, coming up so tom is a very good uh, designer a friend of mine you should check out his profile you'd, you'd love it uh, mm-hmm. if he asks something on the live yeah. should create so, so are we taking the question let's go along as they come let us it will roll up so i don't know how do you pronounce this shayom Shayom. Shayom. Yeah. Okay. So he says, should creative directors' first priority be design management or people management? First of all, it is not management; it is facilitation. You cannot manage designers. Designers don't like to be managed. Designers are a very different kind of uh, stream of people who like to be free, who like who who love to be in their own worlds, and it's like you have to help them. you have to help them by letting them do their design and managing everything else for them like for example if there's a visual designer who's wonderful you help the visual designer by getting projects you help the visual designer by getting accounts by uh, being able to uh, get the payments done in time for the designer or coming up with a brief or doing the research supposingly a designer is working on say wildlife then you do the research you come up with briefs and pointers that listen these are the pointers that you might have to work with and this will give you maximum results once you do that then the designer will get that creative freedom to create those illustrations create those graphics and it's important that you create that trust within the designer and yourself so that is why it is never managing the designer it is always facilitating the designer and managing the process so that is how it works and it's about yeah it's collaborative effort eventually so yes did i answer your question i think i did <laughs> you spoke to him his you spoke to his heart i can i can tell you that any designer <laughs> would love it up 
And uh, yeah, came from my heart it. also. It's the same thing, Anirban. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just, just let me be. Don't, don't ask me a lot of questions. I know what I'm doing. When I come up with the end result, you're gonna, you're gonna see. And you know, for a weekend cook like me, that's exactly how I am doing. I'm not at all collaborating while I'm cooking. I would rather yeah. like to wow. Oh, there's an apple in the chicken today. You know, I never saw that camp come. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I can cut those vegetables for you, but I know that you will cook it best, so I'm not going to interfere there for sure. Then it yeah, works. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and yes. and you can see I'm sure on the timeline. I I learned uh, little bits of whatever guitar I know from him. He's another tremendous guru, and uh, congrats to him. He set up his own music school in Gurgaon. Wow. Uh, in Delhi, in oh. Delhi. Yeah, not in Gurgaon. In east of Kalash, yeah. So, so uh, he's he's really enjoying the conversation. Uh, uh, creative people like to work by themselves, but when they come to a school or a university kind of setup, not everybody is quite up there in the creative space. It takes a lot of uh, blue collar efforts to to connect, get things moving, admin. Uh, but yeah, you hit on the point that you know for a creative designer it sounds very much like agile you know in in project management you know, the role of the scrum master is uh, is just to take off the impediments you know it's okay. not to try to manage the team and uh, yes. ensure everybody is meeting the timelines it's your team you you have as much as ownership as as i do it's self organizing um, i am there just to ensure that you know Nothing caves, um, nothing gets held up, nothing gets stuck up, and I, I remove all those impediments along the road, and I just get it flowing along mm -hmm. along the timeline. Mm -hmm. But just just one addition to what you're saying is, but one more important thing that a design manager has to do is he or she has to define the deadline in a way that it should not uh, have a problem with the designer's creative freedom as well as set up with the business side of the whole setup you know uh, so a very good example for this again is if you go to a tailor and uh, and i'm not at all comparing a tailor to a designer here don't take me wrong okay but uh, if you go to a tailor and, or a boutique person and you tell that person mujhe na shaadi mein 24th ko jana hai you get my stuff done by 23rd you never get it on 20, 23rd you never do right and <laughs> because they have a different way of thinking and doing things so that is how on a very layman perspective you happen to uh, you know observe that and you tell that person at least 15 days earlier that listen uh, i want to uh, i want that thing done by around second or third of that month then we should be good you know then that works well enough so this basic thing, you know, I want to get a TV designed. I know the designer is probably not going to work for the first seven days out of the 10 days of deadline. I should be cool with it. And I should be okay with it that the designer is just roaming around, moving around, making some sketches here and there. I am not going to eat that person's head there. Because if I do that, I know I'm going to lose on those seven days of work. And the remaining three days in which work might expedite it like anything and come up with a wonderful design possible. So just, just that addition. Yeah. It, it reminds us, I mean, it's been the classic thing with designers, you know, The Last Supper by Da Vinci. Uh, and he probably uh, spent close to four to six months trying to find the face of Judas to put on Last Supper. He would go make live studies of people in the marketplace. And his sponsor would go nuts that, hey, he's going to complete this grand fresco on, uh, on, uh, on the cathedral. And all this guy is doing is looking for one face, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, we know it's a masterpiece, and the role of Judas is so pivotal in that whole thing, right? So it's it's not just getting a face. And he could have drawn any face, you know, Leonardo da Vinci could have drawn any face, but you know, it's that one pivotal face, and and finally, I think he got somebody looking crooked enough. And and he took a live sketch. He was not taking any chances. And that's what went up. So it's it's a classic thing with designers. Let them be taken uh, their own pace. Yes. But at the same time, somebody's gonna uh, take care of the timeline as well. 
<laughs> yeah, you should have that um, diplomacy across to be discussing with the management that the designer will be able to do it. And uh, that that is exactly why this design manager is the person who bridges the gap between the designer and the management. So that is what, because the design manager has trust on the designer. And at the same time, the business people have the trust on the design manager. And that's how it works, actually. Okay. That's fabulous. Uh, let's change gears a bit and um, get into more uh, pra practical stuff. I have picked up some really cool small daily tips that <laughs> you keep posting, which the rest of the audience may not be aware of. And it's very everyday life. Because I have got some more context into your life, maybe I, I, I get the hang of it. But what are the, let's say, top three tips that you can offer our audiences here who are trying to manage home, trying to manage work, and if work is just crazy when you're working from home, there are no boundaries, right? So how, how do you go about, you know, telling yourself and managing your day? <laughs> three tips. It is very difficult. I cannot push on three tips, okay? One is, uh, I should be able to quickly move from being at work to house, you know. Like, I have this chutney kept next to my table. All I do is just take it up and I sit into my video calls. Wonderful, that's done, I'm done. <laughs> because at this time, I really don't want to waste my time. After, like, if it's one o'clock, after I finish my work till one, I go back to the kitchen to clean my vessels. So I don't want to keep changing and wasting my time on that. That is one. And second, very important thing is, you know, um, I understand the priority that I am working. And because I'm working, I can get bread home, you know, uh, or rather rice is the word because we are in India. I can, you know, get stuff home because I'm working. So I will have to prioritize that first. So I am not going to be able to uh, be like my nani or dadi who could uh, continuously keep washing the bartans or continuously keep cooking or something like that. I cannot do that. But uh, at the same time, my nani's and dadi's wisdom of uh, how do I reduce the amount of um, waste or how do I reduce the amount of extra work that has been put up, that is coming into use right now especially during the work from home thing and uh, if you have little kids it is difficult so the way i do it is uh, where i work i have i always like if i'm moving my tables for working i have this one place in the corner where my daughter sits and does her homework or I get to see her at least, you know, that that's the best part of the work from home that I can see my daughter. So right now she's old enough. But when uh, I still remember when she was a little baby and I used to be working, I've never taken a break. I used to put her in my lap and I have taken calls, global level calls with Unilever at Singapore from there. And I was literally sitting like this that she should not wake up and her sound should not come out of when I was presenting. So yeah. that challenge is real, you know, but but I think eventually a person fares through. So one tip is, it is fine. Do it only once a day. No one is going to come and kill you for not doing it. Okay. That is one. <laughs> Second is, please take your breaks. As in maybe after uh, an hour and a half work, how at your workplace, you probably walk around and come or you probably... Uh, even go to the washroom and come, you know. I think you should do that because when you're doing at home, that uh, demarcation doesn't occur. And uh, the third important th thing is uh, have your kid and your people in your house understand that you are working, you know. So concentrating becomes difficult, but then if, if eventually your people understand that, yes, this is her work time and uh, I might say hello to her from far off, but I'll not go and disturb her. You know, I, I can only talk from the viewpoint of a woman here. I'm sorry. Maybe the uh, things from the other side, you can help us. <laughs> no, it's true. And, and, and also, I love your, I loved your uh, tip about cooking. Don't try to come up with the master chef style. <laughs> No, no, no. And I, I even saw 
सॉ दैट मैम जिसमें ये क्वारंटाइन में कुकर में केक बनाना इंपॉर्टेंट है क्या आई एम नॉट गुड केक नो आई नॉट हैव द केक फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम नाउ जितना नॉर्मल दाल चावल वॉट एवर सब्जी एवरी थिंग यू मेक एवरी डे आई जस्ट डू दैट मच and at the time of having food i have food with my daughter that touch wood is the plus point that i can have it with her every day and i enjoy that factor and my bartan rakh deti hu sham ko after i finish working at 6 o'clock in the evening i will wash my bartan and then i'll be okay that's how it to be roz ka kon karega chef chef no 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 <laughs> yeah the whole deal uh, coming up with something and it's more for weekend chefs like like myself yes. you know right Okay, every time. That's that's cool. That's cool. And kids get a hang of it because I've seen my daughter grow up with uh, Shabitri has been working uh, uh, mm. from home primarily, having to go to office and uh, uh, on during her presentations, so working home primarily. So my daughter has designed a, a laptop for herself, which looks just like her mom's laptop. So the kids. Wow. <laughs> yeah they they know how world looks like and they can set their own boundaries they're very understanding and and it's amazing to see how they fit into the construct and they know um, there's very sensitive people very intelligent yeah my daughter just told sudhir yesterday that she's working from home because she's doing her homework at home <laughs> Oh yeah, just a small comment here. It is a talk about design thinking, Madhya yes, Pradesh, because we are talking about how you design your team during time. Um, uh, I, I was just, uh, I was just responding to the comment that you know it seemed, uh, it seems very, uh, you know. Home, home talk, but we, we were talking specific to how you design your day during the quarantine and make sure that you don't burn out in the long run. Because the whole world's working from home, and um, you're just expecting to deliver. Uh, and and work has surreptitiously got into uh, all sorts of communication media. Uh, WhatsApp. It's been a while, uh, and I won't be surprised if we start receiving work on Instagram someday. you know as your your boss logs into instagram and says hey I, i'm seeing you live about my version 3 you know so no but uh, touch wood it is a good thing this shift has been good as in this is probably one of the first times when everyone just just give me a second i'm sorry just getting a little stormy out so this shift has been really good wherein people have understood that yes we can work from home or we do and uh, hence people that is helpful now because otherwise that was not the case earlier earlier with regards to work from home we used to not be as easy probably did i lose you i'm going to fill in for anirban here is yes we were talking on design thinking is it my video or it's video. your video your video was freezing i think but i think we are on track now right okay yeah it looks like yeah yes yep all right so uh let's talk um uh, let's talk i don't know when uh, wifi will ditch us again but let's talk about how how do you think uh and we've got a lot of good examples of design thinking and innovation coming for people jumping in trying to help out you know this sense of community this sense of um, uh empathy around the world so you know big engineering houses are designing um, ventilators right ferrari is tesla they are coming up with ventilators and face in design yesterday matt and i were talking about decathlon uh, they released their 3d uh, they released their a uh, face mask for snorkeling plan online for other people they can in private print their own masks for their own protection 
right? So that's that's something we've never seen before because companies are so guarded about their IPs, right? You you could never think about that post uh, pre COVID, right? So how do you think design thinking is coming about in, in a post COVID world? And and it's always made the world better place, you know. Being a designer, I would always say that. But how do you think specific to the current scenario, um, design thinking is coming uh, to the forefront to get us out of here faster? It is going to be very, very important because design thinking itself is based on empathy. It is based on collaboration. And just imagine after we have been through a huge, huge problem, we will need collaboration more rather than working in silos. Okay. So design thinking to start with is more help with one, looking into the empathy part of it, looking into what is exactly the problem that we have to work into and go ahead. But here I must say that it is more about design strategy and business thinking together, which will work towards creating innovations. Because here we're going to actually move, like we're going to shut down one part of the whole industry, one part of the whole way uh, everyone works and move to a new part. You know, so for new part, we'll have to look into NPD, we'll have to look into innovation, all that will have to have a very solid base of design thinking, which will convert into design strategy and move across with business thinking to come up with great innovations, which are going to help us to survive rather well enough. You know? Like if you see AI is a very, very huge thing right now, which is coming up and AI has a very big element of design into it. You know, whether it is product design, whether it is uh, graphic, uh, whether it is UI, UX, whatever. AI has got a very important element of design in it. And again, let me repeat that design is never performed in silos. So when we are thinking of design strategy as such, there is going to be uh, an inclusion of people from all walks of life, whether they are engineers, whether they are doctors, whether they are uh, lawyers, they all work together. If you see any of the case studies, put up by IDEO or uh, Fitch. Again, I'm mentioning them both because they are the ones who have a very good uh, uh, repository of case studies. You will see that small projects are supported by different people of, uh, you know, different people. Like there might be a doctor working across. For example, if you see there was this project on the Iron Bindi, right, where you where uh, it was given for the tribal area and women used to wear it and hence it was helping them with their, with absorption of iron. So that again was done in consultation with not only designers, design strategists, more with uh, with ethnographic researchers, along with doctors, then along with social workers. So basically it is that design thinking is not in silos. It is more about a collaborative working across and hence it converts into design strategy, which can be used in each and every single business in NGOs and social work and tomorrow Basically, social, I can't even call it social work. It is going to be important to, uh, you know, stitch back that fabric of social structure, which is going to get dis dis uh, destructed because of COVID rather, you know, be it migrant workers, be it whatever. We, people are going to need a different kind of a fabric to be stitched across. People are going to need new systems. People are going to need new products. All that design strategy is going to make a very big impact into it. Along with, of course, everyone. I'm not well, with everyone. Say the doctors, the engineers, the lawyers, the social workers. Everyone are working together, and that collaborative structure will come up, which will work out. So design thinking is going to stay, and I'm glad that is it has been included in school. So it is going to help students also. It's included in schools in Delhi, CBSC, I think now. Yeah, and uh, tell me about your stint for uh, the Atal Innovation Mission and uh, the labs that we have in our uh, in our country as a part of uh, um, innovate innovate and startup India and those kind of initiatives. So with Startup India, we are already linked, as and I already do Global Goals Jam with them. Uh, we've been doing it for three years and we've been working with SDGs as in sustainable development goals and we're trying to come up with solutions and uh, people come there, they ideate, we have this three-day sprint and they work through. That is wonderfully happening and I'm hoping this year also it works great enough. Uh, we also do a business plan competition which is again related to this only because uh, it, 
uh, students come along they work across an sdgs that is one part but yes satel innovation mission is again that part of me which you have met as in you know the person who keeps doing something out of the way to help everyone because i really feel i want to give back to the society trust me had it been possible i would have been one of the uh, facilitators or uh, people who are helping out outside right now but uh, yeah i cannot do that but i want to do whatever i can from my own possible way and uh, so in adult innovation mission what they are doing is they um, they select these mentors and uh, i'm glad to say that there are wonderful mentors in that list and that is amazing yeah. as in i've seen kiran mazumdar show over there and i am just so i feel so good to be in that line out there and uh, what is done in that is you happen to get the chance to mentor two schools on innovation okay right. and uh, so they have these thinker labs uh, set up and in these labs uh, yes now in india uh, innovation is equated to uh, adding in a 3d printer to your school so that is of course a part of it but uh, more than that the thought process as to how do we get students coming in and there are wonderful people there there are these close groups you will see that there are people who work in the rural sector and amazing as in they might not be uh, good in their english diction or whatever but that is irrespective they have come up with very small innovations which have helped many farms across also so and it's again that ownership thing where the kids have got ownership students have got ownerships those little children and they get to work along with uh, their surroundings that is immense you know that is amazing i think being a part of that is going to help Uh, me to grow rather you know for me to understand better of course i will be giving them my part of no uh this is uh, what happens yeah uh that's 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 all cool i mean the, it there's such a lot to talk about yeah yeah i don't know if it's my video frozen or your yours but there's just such a lot to talk about we need a uh part 2 and part 3 of our conversation for sure Mm, thanks a lot for having the part 1 it has been amazing <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah the the part part 1 is let's not think too much let's just go live how much prep did we have nothing right we have to people i think it should be good cool and shubha can't hear me can you hear me wait a minute you can yeah and i think we may be forced to uh to wind up our conversation here because uh it just internet keeps playing spoiled sport for long conversations but you know i can always trust for part 2 and part 3 with you so yeah i don't have to think about my own, keeping my ongoing guest list i've got one one uh one what do you say one permanent guest for for a multi part series okay i think i'm better now i can can you hear me but anirban i can i can i can but i was i was just saying that uh, you know given the state of internet we might have to wind uh, wind up our conversation at this point yeah yeah no problem at all that's awesome and uh, great um let's let's see how we can uh, uh, we can record this i i said i'll be sharing a small hack with you yeah yeah i'd like There to know is. what is the hack <laughs> on the bottom of the screen.